Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah Avery and I am the Executive Director of Quanta Change. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I'm wondering if you ever feel like you can't trust yourself. There are a couple of different ways I have seen this in my practice over the last 22 years. I'm only going to talk about one of those facets today. I'll probably save the other one for next week. Um, so one of these facets, uh, one of these kinds of not trusting yourself, um, I'm wondering if you ever feel like you're always second guessing yourself. Are you feeling like it's hard to make decisions or uh, maybe you feel like it's hard to, to form an opinion or if you're asked for your thoughts on something, it's really kind of scary because you you don't maybe you kind of know what you think, but you're not sure you really want to share that. You're not sure it, it fits well with anyone else um, if you should be sharing that. Um, do you feel like you often need to like check in with someone who you think knows more than you do? Or, or here's another facet of this particular kind of not trusting yourself. Um, are you, are you smart? Do you know that you know a lot? And yet every time when you go into a situation, no matter how smart you are, you always feel like you don't know enough, like you're going to have to work really hard to know enough. Um, so if that is, is feeling any of that's feeling familiar to you um, you're not alone I can actually relate to both of those facets and so can many of my clients over the last 22 years so you're in good company um, so I'm wondering if you've worked on this issue for yourself in some way have you done say therapy or some kind of self-help work to like boost your confidence have you um, sought more education, more training in some way, either to increase your knowledge, uh, maybe a lot, or maybe to come up with some better structure for helping yourself make decisions. Um, has, has this worked for you? Are you feeling more confident? Are you feeling more like you can just walk into a situation with what you know and who you are? Or and, and if you have, if, if something you found has worked, that's fantastic. That's really great. It's always good to find what works for you. And I celebrate that, whatever it is. Um, but if it hasn't worked for you, are you still feeling hesitant? Are you still feeling like... Um, Maybe you're even feeling like it's gotten worse, like you're procrastinating more on making decisions or getting things done. Maybe you're more worried or anxious anytime you have to make a decision or anytime someone asks for your input. Uh, maybe you're working overtime to overcome this feeling that you're just not smart enough or you don't know enough. Um, you know, if you've tried working on this and you're not feeling any better, things aren't really working for you any better, what I want you to know is you're not alone. Um, it's not your fault if this has not, these methods haven't worked for you. It's really that they haven't been able to get to the source of the problem. So what is the source of this feeling that you can't trust yourself and what you know and what your experience is? Um, so the source is something that quanta change calls learned distress. Learned distress is the feeling that you absorbed very early in life, that there is something wrong with you being just the way that you are. And as you absorb this learned distress from the way that people around you, your parents, other early caregivers, from the way that they feel about being themselves, your brain also develops a survival mechanism that serves two purposes. One is it allows you to, well, kind of keep getting up in the morning and, and moving forward in life, uh, despite the feeling that there's something wrong with you. It also is formed in, uh, sort of formed around the shape of your parents and other early caregivers and and how they felt most comfortable. So it allows you to fit well with them. And throughout life, your sense of self that stores 
how you feel about being yourself, which includes your learned distress and your survival mechanism for dealing with it, throughout life, your sense of self is automatically generating all of the negative thoughts, feelings, um, situations, ways of, of behaving and responding to situations based on your learned distress and your survival mechanism. So this is why you keep seeing repeating patterns. You keep saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I'm here again. I'm feeling the same way again. I just responded the same way. I just felt um, like I had no voice in the same way. I felt uh, scared about going into a new situation in, in the same way I always have. Uh, why does this pattern keep repeating? Well, it's because your sense of self is using your learned distress and your survival mechanism that allowed you to fit well with your parents and, and maybe older siblings, um, other early caregivers of yours, and it keeps generating all of your situations out of that same learned distress. So some ways that uh, some sort of facets or pieces of learned distress that tend to generate this repeating uh, experience of not being able to trust yourself, um, the feeling that you're not smart enough, the feeling that you're not good enough, uh, closely related, um, or the feeling that you maybe have to be more perfect all the time or else. Um, also, this big piece of learned distress that we all have the feeling that I don't matter exactly being myself can really generate a lot of this because by extension, if you don't matter, then your opinions, your thoughts, your viewpoints also don't matter. And you say, well, I, I better not share that. I better keep quiet about what I have to think. And sometimes even so much so that you have a hard time connecting to what you actually think and feel uh, because it's, it's just so shut down by this feeling that you don't matter and you need not to matter because that's how you fit well early in life. And that is lots and lots of us. So if you're feeling that way, you are in very good company. Um, there are some specific facets of survival mechanisms. And I will say that there are six patterns, six, six basic overall patterns of learned distress plus survival mechanism that goes along with it. And at the end of this video, I'm going to um, share what those six patterns are and tell you how you can find out for free which one of those patterns you have. But some facets of survival mechanism that tend to generate this, this sense that um, I can't trust myself, I can't trust what I know. Um, one is it's not safe to take up space in, in say, a conversation. It's not safe for for my opinion to take any space up in in any given uh, space, in a conversation, in a relationship. And so you just stay quiet as a result. That's how you survive. Um, sometimes it's the need to uh, subordinate to others, to let them win, to say, no, they're uh, their thoughts, their feelings need to win so that I will be safe for some reason. Um, another one of these survival mechanisms is this pressure to be more perfect or to know more all the time. Um, so that can really lead you to keep striving for that, to keep striving to know more all the time. And that pressure is is really never satisfied. You always feel like you have to know more. You always feel the, that pressure. So there's some those are some really common facets of learned distress and survival mechanism that I've seen over the past 22 years that really generate uh, this sense of not being able to trust yourself. So what is the reason then, if we can understand that, maybe you're saying, Sarah, hey, I know this. I have examined this exact stuff that you're talking about, maybe in slightly different words, but I've been, I got it. I've been in 20 years of therapy, 30 years of therapy. Uh, I understand all of this. I know where it's coming from. Why hasn't anything I've tried worked? I told you 20 years of therapy. Why didn't that help me feel more confident? Why didn't that help me uh, feel like I can make decisions on my own as an adult? Why does it uh, not help me to feel like I can just walk into some situation with my own experience and my own intelligence um, and, and feel good about it? Why? Well, the reason is that 
your sense of self that stores how you feel about being yourself is inaccessible to rational level change. In other words, you cannot think your way out of your learned distress. And I wonder if you've experienced this. Maybe you know that you're really smart. Maybe you have tests. Uh, maybe you have multiple degrees that uh, confirm that you're pretty smart. Maybe you always graduated top of your class and yet you still don't feel like you know enough. You still don't feel like you're smart enough. Does that, does that ring a bell? Um, if so, maybe you've uh, sort of identified yourself as having imposter syndrome, say, because you're still not feeling, despite all, of, all evidence to the contrary, like you don't know enough, like you don't, um, you don't have what you need to really succeed and say out there in the world, hey, I know these things. Or um, maybe you know from all of your work on yourself that you should be able to um, share your thoughts. You should be able to make decisions based on what is important to you. And yet you're still feeling like you can't, you're still feeling lots of anxiety and worry in that realm. So that's because, um, this, that you can't think your way out of your learned distress and your survival mechanism. But the great news is that quanta change, this work I've been doing for the last 22 years, was developed to address that very problem. It was developed to get through this rational brain roadblock um, to, to getting rid of learned distress. So the way that quanta change does that is that it works with your brain during sleep. And there are two reasons for that. The first is that sleep is when your sense of self is getting recharged. Um, just like you recharge your cell phone battery, your sense of self is depleted in its energy every day and it has to get recharged. And sleep is when that is happening. And the other reason is that sleep is when your rational brain is entirely shut down and with it, uh, the rational brain roadblock is deactivated so that you can really get to the part of you that stores how you feel and and tell it you want to not be recharging anymore with this learned distress but that you want to be recharging with your natural well-being this is the feeling at your core that you are just great just being yourself, that you have everything you need, that you are smart enough, that you can trust yourself, that you have what you need to uh, share yourself in the world successfully. And so as you recharge at night while you're asleep through the quanta change process with your core well-being, your uniqueness, instead of recharging with learned distress, layers of learned distress are peeled off permanently your natural core well-being expands to take the place that that icky learned distress was sitting all of this time and as you can imagine you have more well-being more access to it you feel better um but also you have more access to um what you really think what you really know in yourself what really matters to you and so some ways that this look like uh for people who experience this kind of change is that you really feel wow i can actually trust myself i do know enough or i am smart enough or not just because you're repeating it to yourself um but you really feel that way at your core or you can go into situations just being yourself because you know that you've got it you've got it that's what it feels like um you feel like you have the the knowledge or the capacity to um to understand what you need you don't have to keep relying on other people to know enough to tell you how you have the capacity to make decisions based on what really matters to you because you're really a lot more in touch with that um you can feel like you can take more charge of your life and and voice your opinions what you have to say in the world um so let me give you a couple of examples of what this is like and maybe it'll resonate with one of these stories or maybe with both so my first example it's a great example that illustrates um the fact that 
it's not about being smart enough. It's about how you feel about your ability to be smart. So this is a client who had multiple higher degrees. She had always graduated top of her class. She, you could talk to her for 30 seconds and know she's plenty smart enough. Um, she had lots of professional experience that, that told her she knew how to learn, how to understand things. Um, and yet she said, even as she was going through excuse me, <coughs> her um, degree programs, she would go into every single class having already not just bought the books for the class, but having read all of the books for every class before the semester started, because she felt if she had not done that, she would have been behind. She would have literally been behind the class if she'd done that. Can you relate to any of this? Have you worked so hard to prove to yourself that you know enough to to walk into a situation um, feeling like you're not going to be behind, you're not going to be the slowest one in the class, you're not going to be in some kind of deficit. So if so, um, here's what change looked like for her. I'll just give you a, a tiny snippet. She had a week where there were a couple of different volunteer projects she was involved with, and she went into little trainings for those projects. And she said, I just showed up, Sarah. It was really different. I just showed up. I didn't study up before. I showed up and it was just fun and easy. And I, I got a sense of what I needed and I got everything I needed. And then I could just have a good time involved, being involved in this project. Um, so she said this felt completely different to her. She didn't plan it out. Um, we didn't decide the next time you're going into a training, you're going to do this. She just did it. She just walked in in this extremely different way, feeling so different. And especially if you're somebody who feels like every time you walk into a new kind of situation, you start at zero. Um, I hope this helps give you a sense that that can really change. Um, let me give you one more example. So this is a client who was the type who tended to really second guess herself, to feel like she needed other people's input, other people's guidance sometimes, um, to form opinions, to decide what to do. I'm wondering if this rings a bell for you. I can, I can really relate to this one myself also. And you know, it's exhausting, right? It's, it's so exhausting to spend so much time worrying that you're not going to do the right thing or make the right decision or say the right thing, right? It's just, it's exhausting. So, um, this client um, unlearned lots of layers of this, and there are a couple of things that she shared over, over this time where she was unlearning this that really illustrate this kind of change. So one of those was in terms of her parenting. Um, she just started to gain more and more confidence about herself as a parent of teenagers and really a stronger and stronger sense that she knew what was right for her kids. She really did. And she'd spent a long time really sort of subordinating to uh, her now ex-husband who, who's a pretty strong personality. He tends to say, I know everything and here's what we should do. And she'd sub sort of subordinated to that, said, let him win. Um, and so she started to feel like, hey, wait a second. I think I know what's right for my kids. And it's different from what my ex thinks, but I have really good reasons for it. Um, not only did she find that, but she started to find people around her who really agreed with her, who really backed her up on that. Not because she was out there seeking for affirmation from people, uh, but because she would just be sharing with a friend and they would say, oh yeah, you're totally right about that. So that happens too when people around you suddenly can come and back you up in a way that you've never felt before. Um, another way in which she saw this was she restarted an old career and initially she was feeling really hesitant, like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I really 
know enough here. Maybe I should go back and start over with my training. But as she got into it, she realized, oh, wait a second, it's really coming back to me. I really do know enough. And then as she started to take clients, they were saying things like, oh my gosh, you're totally changing my life. This is so amazing. And in a very short amount of time, her business grew exponentially just by word of mouth. And um, so she and she just started to really enjoy it. It just felt easy and fun and natural to her. Um, that hesitancy, that worry about going into every situation, every workday, like, uh oh, I don't know if I can do this. That was gone. She just felt like it was fun and she got to share what she knew and she got to be creative in working with her clients and helping them solve their problems. So um, I hope that if you resonate with either of these sorts of facets of not trusting yourself, whether it's sort of the I don't know enough, the sort of imposter syndrome kind or the like really second guessing yourself, not having confidence in yourself and what you know and your ability to make decisions. I hope you're feeling a bit more hopeful, a bit like, wow, maybe real change in this realm is possible. Maybe I could really be confident in myself in a, a way that I never have been. Um, I have seen it so, so many times over the past couple decades. So it really is possible. Um, so as I said at the beginning, I, I was gonna tell you which uh, these six patterns of learned distress are what they are. Um, so these patterns of learned distress and survival mechanism are called the idealist, the perfectionist, the optimist, the caregiver, the defeatist, and the dictator, or the uh, sometimes I call that benevolent dictator. And the reason to find out which of these patterns you have is not to just do another decade of examination, because I know you may be tired of examining the problem and digging to the, the source of it. It's really to find out what you're going to be peeling off layers of through the quanta change process. It's really to find out what you're going to be getting rid of to reveal your uniqueness, your core well-being, which is unique to you. It doesn't fit into any pattern, but that's what quanta change really can help you um, uncover and unearth and start to share in the world. So the way that you find out which of these patterns you have is you're going to take a free, in-depth, scientifically validated personality test on my website. And it, I will graph that for you and send you a free report that uh, shows you your pattern of learned distress, that icky feeling that there's something wrong with you, um, and also your survival mechanism for dealing with that pattern. And I'll share um, how quanta change might help you with that pattern, help you peel layers of it off and really feel better and have your life work better in a multitude of ways. So I hope that you'll do that. You To do that, you go to my website, quantachange.com. That's Q-U-A-N-T-A change.com and click on the free report button and uh, take the test and I will send you your free report. Um, so I hope that I'll be hearing from you soon with that. And if you had any questions about these facets of learned distress, it's a great way to get your questions answered, um, some of them. But you can also put your questions, your reflections in the comments if some of this really resonated for you or you wanted me to go more in depth maybe in a, in a future a video on some facet, um, some question you have about this, I'd be happy to do that. So thank you so much again for joining me today. And I hope you will join me again next week to hear about another facet of how people don't trust themselves and how quanta change can really um, help that change and how quanta change really can help you feel better and help you feel good being you. Thank you so much.